there are some car designers for whom the announcement of a new car creates worldwide interest. They number just a handful of automotive engineering geniuses, but perhaps the most beloved and lauded is Gordon Murray. At the 78th members meeting at Goodwood, we saw Murray's latest creation in action for the first time, a three-seater V12 sports car with over 600 horsepower and a fan to aid downforce. Called the T50, it's a bit like a greatest hits compilation of Murray's best work from his career, but which bits of that amazing career do stand out? Here's 10 of the best. And please remember to drop this video a like if you do enjoy it and subscribe to the channel for more from Goodwood Road and Racing. Aha, the first fan car. There's probably not a lot you don't already know about the Brabham BT46B. It is perhaps the ultimate example of a ground effect Formula One car. One with an interpretation of the rules so advanced it came across as a bit of an unfair advantage. The basics are, well, actually pretty basic. If you stick a big fan on the back of a racing car, you can suck out all the air from underneath the body. Basically, sticking it to the ground like a turbocharged limpet. That would allow driver Nicky Lauda to achieve cornering speeds that were barely believable in 1978. And it did. On its first outing, the BT46B dominated the Swedish Grand Prix at Anderstorp. The rest of the teams were incensed, but the big fan on the back of the car was technically there for cooling and was therefore within the rules. Always alive to politics, Brabham team boss Bernie Eccleston would withdraw the 46B to protect his position of power in Fokker, the Formula One team's association. Fan cars were then banned and have never returned. Perhaps not the bad boy poster child of the 46B, the BT49 was, nonetheless, one of Murray's greatest moments. It was the car in which Nelson Piquet won his first of three titles, and while not as openly outrageous as its forebear, was nonetheless a lesson in exploiting the rules. First, Brabham ditched the temperamental, if charismatic, Alfa Romeo V12 it had been using, replacing it with the ageing but extremely reliable Cosworth DFV. Then, in 1981, in the car's third season, Murray fitted hydropneumatic suspension, a system that lowered the car below the regulated 60mm ride height to increase the ground effect. It was also fitted with the now regulated fixed side skirts, but they were made of an allegedly much more flexible material so they would still seal the underside. It was outrageously fast when it worked. Sadly, the 49's ability to produce downforce exposed some of its components to massive wear, leading to unreliability. But Piquet was able to drive around the issues to secure three wins and a championship victory at the last race. Not only one of the best, but perhaps one of the most beautiful racing cars of all time. The simplicity of the BT-52's arrow-shaped design has seldom been matched in F1 history, but it came about through a sudden but major regulation change. The BT-52 became Murray's six-week wonder, given that was the amount of time he had to redesign the car for 1982 after the late news of the banning of ground effect aerodynamics. Murray set about the new design with gusto, immediately ditching the long downforce-generating side pods and adding a massive wing at the rear and a delta-shaped spoiler out front. Weight distribution was pitched way backwards, with 70% over the rear wheels to help with traction. That allowed the BT-52 to exploit its other great strength, the inline four-cylinder BMW M12 engine. Perhaps the peak of turbo-era tech, this motor would spit out more than a thousand horsepower in the right trim. Despite its capabilities, PK would only finish four races in 1982, but when he did, he was never lower than fifth. By 1983, though, the issues had been fixed, and the BMW engine was only getting more potent. A second title was PK's, and the BT-52 was rarely off the podium. But never mind all that. Even if it had never won a race, this would surely be one of the sexiest F1 cars ever made. Wait, what? The BT-55 was rubbish. It never even got so much as a fastest lap. Aha. Uh -huh. But sometimes there is still inherent good design underneath poor results. The BT-55 looks pretty awesome. 
It's a low-line design that's trying to tuck the whole car out of the upcoming air. The problem was that so low was it that to get that massive BMW motor into it, it had to be cocked to one side. The result? Poor oil circulation and many broken BMW motors. The principle, though, was good. So good that when Murray walked away from Brabham after the season, he took it with him to help create a monster. Yes, yes, we know the MP44 was not a Gordon Murray designed car, but while he did not inherently design it from scratch, the car was created in his first season as technical director at McLaren. It benefited from some of Murray's latest aerodynamic wisdoms. That low body, hoping to get the car out of the way of the air, not the other way around, is straight from the BT55 and allowed the giant rear wing free access to unadulterated air to create more downforce. That combined with a much more convincing powertrain from Honda and two blokes called Prost and Senna led to perhaps F1's greatest ever single season performance. 16 races, 15 poles, 15 wins. For all his life spent working at the very pinnacle of motorsport, there is one car that will stand astride pretty much everything Murray has ever done or will do the McLaren F1. It is, perhaps, the perfect road car. One designed with absolutely no pretenses to track capability. That came later, and much to Murray's chagrin. In the middle, Murray was teaming up with BMW again, slotting a howling 620 horsepower V12 into the centre of his latest design for perhaps the greatest road car sound ever. You quite simply know enough about the F1 already. Three seats, driver up front, fastest car in the world at the time, etc, etc. But what you might not know is that the F1 very nearly had a very different sound. It was originally to be blessed with a Honda engine, as per McLaren's F1 engine tie-up. The change came at Murray's own intervention. He approached BMW's Carl Roche, having known him from his time at Brabham, and the result is history. He didn't want to do it, but of course, eventually, he did. Murray is very insistent that the F1 was never, ever designed with racing in mind. It was a pure road car, but you can take the designer away from the racetrack, but the racetrack will never leave their mind. On was bolted a splitter and a big wing added to the back. The arches got a little bigger and the underneath was fiddled with. And bingo, the F1 won Le Mans at its first attempt. Okay. So some fortune was needed to get a GT car in front of the prototypes, and rain played a heavy part, but Murray's motorsport-derived no-compromise approach to the F1 meant that it was already in perfect shape to race. The lesson? Design a road car properly, and it'll race. No problem. The GTR is now one of the most valuable cars in the world, so spare a thought for those poor souls who asked for their deposits back when they were told the original price. This is not the first time we've mentioned the SLR, and possibly not the first time some of you have got angry about it. You won't stop us though, we love the SLR, and we'll make you eventually. That said, it is a difficult argument to put it on a Gordon Murray's greats list. But, there is a good case, and it comes direct from, uh, Gordon Murray. You see, while the SLR was a car of compromise, neither a sports car like the F1 or a stunning supercar like Carrera GT or Pagani Zonda, and was too harsh to be a perfect GT, it was perhaps the pinnacle of compromised cars. It was a highly accomplished machine, with the performance to match all of the aforementioned cars, despite having a big boot and an automatic gearbox. Murray himself, too, remains incredibly proud of the design of the SLR for the ease of its productionization. It's highly underrated, and a worthwhile achievement of Murray that few others could have turned out the way it is. It turns out, the ultimate expression of Gordon Murray's philosophies in the 1990s might not have had a McLaren badge. Before the SLR, before the F1, Murray founded the Light Car Company with former racing driver Chris Kraft in that motorsport mecca, St Neitz. The company made one single car the rocket, and it is perhaps everything that Murray aspired to in a car distilled 
into just 380 kilograms. Yep, this was just a third of the weight of a McLaren F1. The rocket is so small that the DVLA doesn't deem it to need fog lights, which is handy because it doesn't always have them. Its screaming motorbike engine produces 160 horsepower in its mightiest trim, but that gives it a power to weight ratio of 420 horsepower per tonne, which is just shy of a Veyron. And that has an engine that weighs over 100 kilograms more than an entire LCC rocket. That said, it's not the most lusty of designs, being basically a slightly podgy 60s F1 car for the road, but that doesn't matter. The rocket is a true great. Ah, you knew it would come up again, didn't you? How does Gordon Murray create a car that takes every principle he has and combines it with everything he's learned over a four-decade career? Simple. He founds his own supercar company. The Gordon Murray Automotive T50 takes an F1 light body, adds a super high revving Cosworth V12, it is the highest revving engine in any road car, keeps the weight under a ton, and, well, adds a fan. It's basically a Brabham BT46B meets McLaren F1 meets LCC Rocket in 2021, and it'll cost you around a tenth of what an F1 would set you back today. Well, it would do, if it wasn't sold out. Unlike the F1, this does have a track-only special, with the T50S Nicky Lauda following pretty soon. And Murray says there are more affordable, lower-end models coming. GMA might be the most exciting new car company around. Those are just a few of our favourite Gordon Murray designed cars from the history of motoring and motorsport. But which ones have we missed out? What would you add to your ideal list? Let us know in the comments below.